Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla and I've come with another interesting topic that is related to product design. You know that it's a series which is going on. The first episode was about overall design and development process. The second one was with respect to planning process. The third one, which is this one, is with respect to the product design phase. The fourth one will be with respect to the process design. The fifth one will be with respect to what are the process and product validation studies that are being done by the organization and the trials that are being done. The next one will be with respect to what are the feedback assessment and corrective actions that the organization do with respect to the feedback that they receive from the customer. The next one will be with respect to the design change process. And the last one will be with respect to what are the challenges that the organization faces with respect to the design process phase and what are the possible measures that they can take. So let's talk a little bit more deeper with respect to product design phase. Christopher Stinger has very rightly said that our job is to create a product that does not exist and then guide them into life. Something similar happens in this particular phase of product design, wherein based on whatever inputs that the organization receives, they have to convert them into something tangible, maybe in the form of drawings and other things, so that the next process can make a product out of that. So the key and the most important thing in this particular phase is to understand the customer requirements and make sure that all those requirements are incorporated into the product design phase and then goes to the next phase. So whatever outputs that came from the planning phase, which were uh, design goals, reliability goals, quality goals, then preliminary bill of material, preliminary process flow chart, preliminary special characteristics, uh, product assurance plan and lastly the management support. So all these outputs become input for the product design phase. And once all these things are coming here and the cross-functional team is discussing with respect to with respect to all that output. So what can be the possible output of product design phase? Now I'm going to talk about that. The first and the most important will be the engineering drawing. So when I say engineering drawing, it means it includes everything which is the input which is coming from the previous phase. It, it is talking about the dimensions, fitment, function, maybe any legal requirement, maybe any lab testing and whatever possible things are there, everything will be a part of that. So it's very important that persons who are dealing with product drawings, they should be competent not only with respect to their skills with respect to making a drawing but also with respect to the software that is being used because there are a lot of inputs, 3D modeling and all those information that come from the customer. So they should be competent with respect to that. The second key output in this particular phase is with respect to technical specification. When we say technical specification, the intent is that how the product is going to perform and what are the guidelines, how to check that whether it is performing as per that guideline or not. So for example, when you're driving a car at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour and you apply a brake, after how much time the car will actually stop? So you can define say within 30 meters it should stop. So that becomes a technical specification. Similarly, there can be many more technical specifications that can be there. The third will be with respect to the material specifications. It's also important to identify that what are the different kind of materials that will be used in the product and what are the specifications with respect to that. It can be with respect to ROHS, maybe with respect to their shelf life that uh, for how long it can be used, uh, in which condition it has to be kept in certain temperature if it is required, how to dispose of the material once it is uh, say scrapped and uh, whether it is possible to reuse the material again and again. So there can be so many things with respect to material specification. So all those things are identified in this particular phase. The next important thing is with respect to design FME. Now, in general, we always call it that it's a live document. So it's not that it is one off document which is just made once in a time and then not to be used. But at different stages, there is a possibility that DFMA needs to be reviewed and revised again and again. The key thing that happens in DFMA is to 
understand what are the possible failure modes and all those failure modes can come from previous designs it can come from the previous experiences it can also come as an input from the customer also now we need to identify that what can the possible causes and what possible actions that organization can take so that at least with respect to design there should not be any failure or in case there is a failure what is the mitigation plan that can be done so that it can be controlled at a later stage so all those things become a part of dfma the fourth one is with respect to identification of special characteristics so in this particular phase we identify that apart from so many characteristics of the product what are the key things that if in case they are not being taken care of that can result in the product failure or that can result in some legal failures or some legal requirement that are not being met so all those things are a part of identification of special characteristics then we also identify with respect to design of manufacturability and assembly so here the intent is that we may have made the drawing we did all the other things but whether it is practically possible to manufacture the product whether it is possible to assemble the product as per the drawing or not so for example let's take that um, till the previous time we are doing aluminum die casting but now the designer thought that okay let's try a better technology that is magnesium die casting well it's fine to do that but then whether we have that kind of capital do we have that kind of infrastructure to do that or not or say for example whatever tolerances that are being identified in the drawing they are so narrow that rather than using the normal presses or the kind of uh, toolings we have to use fine blanking tool so that increases the cost so it's important to identify that what are the challenges that organization can have with respect to manufacturability and assembly and to find a right solution with respect to that so that is also one of the key output of this process then identification of what kind of new equipment and facilities that are required as i said in a previous example that in case it is actually being decided that now we have to use magnesium die casting instead of aluminum die casting so what are the different kind of challenges that we are going to face what kind of infrastructure we need what kind of machinery we need what kind of safety arrangement organization has to make so that they can fulfill the expectation the next one is with respect to identification of jigs fixture and gauges which are required at this particular stage so once it is being identified it becomes easy to identify that what kind of money that needs to be spent on that whether we have that kind of technology uh to make all those gauges and fixture we need to outsource that so all those things become an output at this particular stage the next key output in this particular phase is with respect to identification of diagnostic guidelines when we say diagnostic guideline it means that when a person is using say a vehicle or maybe using a mobile phone and in case there is a problem so generally we give uh, a reference book wherein you can use that particular book and we can find out that in case this problem happens sort of an faq what needs to be done at this particular stage so organization can identify that in which cases some diagnostic guidelines are required and if required then how it needs to be communicated to the user uh, so that also is a part of that then identification of service parts it may not be required or applicable in all the cases but wherever required say for example in a vehicle generally we see there is a medical kit uh, there is a bulb uh, spare tire earlier there is to be a spark plug and some other things that become a part of a toolkit also they all become a part of the, uh, the other things the service part that are being supported uh, with a vehicle so organization has to decide that what is required and they can identify in this particular stage so based on all these outputs when these outputs are there there are certain things which need to support this entire thing so one of the thing is with respect to design reviews now while doing all this stage it may take one month two month three months year or even more it depends upon the type of project so a regular or periodic review needs to be done to see that whatever targets that we have got in the beginning with respect to quality cost time whether we are meeting those targets is it is it not happening that uh, while designing we have overshoot the cost and it's not possible to uh, make the product in the desired uh, cost level or not so that can be a part of that whatever timeline that has been decided for different stages are we following those timelines or there is a delay in that and there can be many more things that can be discussed as a part of design reviews then another thing here which is important is about reliability studies 
when we talk about reliability study the intent is to see that based on the drawings technical specification how much reliable the product will be whether it will be full able to fulfill the expectation of the customer in terms of uh, the say mean time between failure or with respect to the warranty and all those things or it will have some challenges so that can be a part of reliability study then apart from that there is the possibility that there will be some changes or some revisions that may be coming either from the customer or from the organization so whatever design changes are happening how to incorporate all those changes how to communicate to the relevant people and how to ensure that all those changes are being implemented effectively and communicated all to the all relevant person that is also required at this particular stage and lastly the most important thing that is with respect to the management support it is required that whatever things are happening at different stages they should be communicated to the management so that management is aware about it wherever things are not going right it's very important to communicate to them so that management knows that where they need to interfere and they need to give some support or something like that so that's another important things so if i give a summary i talk the key output engineering drawing engineering specification material specification dfme identification of special characteristics service parts diagnostic guidelines design for manufacturability and assembly identification of equipment and facilities identification of new jigs fixture and gauges and to support that there can be a possibility of design reviews design changes reliability study and the management support and if all those things will happen in a systematic manner certainly it will lead to customer satisfaction it will ensure that whatever is a customer expectation that will be taken care of and employees will also feel satisfied and their morale will also remain high so this was the third episode in this particular series the next one will be with respect to process design in case you want to understand a little bit more about this video so you can click the below link and you will find a blog there and that will give you information much more detail and if you are liking this kind of videos and you want that this kind of video should come to you regularly you can subscribe to my youtube channel thank you